Hello Pisces and welcome to my other desk. Yeah, this is where I do my multiple readings on my Divinely Guided channel. If you're interested and you have other signs that you'd like to watch, I do all signs on that channel. But tonight, just as the full moon is about to take effect, I am going to do a reading on the blocks that we have because believe in the impossible, we first have to work on what is possible. And I decided to ask for four different cards to maybe help us out with the blocks. Then I'm going to use clarifiers to help us. So the first card that they put out for us is the world. Mm -hmm. And I have another card, Spirit, to help us with the blocks for Pisces, please. The Eight of Cups. Let's back a little bit. I hope that you can see okay. Kept the lighting kind of low. We have the Six of Cups. And we have the Three of Swords. Oh, these cards are great. They're great, you guys. Okay. So I'm going to take the Healing Light Tarot because it's really good. Um, no, I'm going to, I've changed my mind. I think this one will express more. And yes, I have a lot of decks. <laughs> but I use them all, so I really do, unbelievably enough. Okay, I'm just going to shuffle these really good, you guys. This is the Light Sears Tarot. Okay. So the first block that I'm seeing is the World card. And this is just to explain that before you can feel the sun, an ending must come. This is the end of a cycle for Pisces, okay? It's a completion. It's an ending. In other words, a beginning, too. So there's integration. Rarely with integration do you have, like, sun cards, you know, like perfect happiness. Because in the end, you may have it. But if you're starting something brand new, there's a transition period that has to be done. There's loose ends to tie up. There's stuff that you have to um, finish up. There's stuff, lessons that you have to take from the phase you've just finished into this new one. Now the sun is going to be there for you. Ultimately, when you reach this completion, you will reach your sunny moment. But this is a block we're talking about. So that is why. This is why this is so difficult. Because you're actually coming to a point where you've learned so much. And now it's you know you have to apply it to something. But sometimes it's not always apparent right until the moment that it happens. And I think this is, this is what I'm getting from this. Next up, Pisces, we have the Eight of Cups. Yeah. The Eight of Cups is also about an ending or a journey. Okay? And the thing is, is that we have to leave behind the things that no longer serve us. 
so that we can develop this lover's harmonious relationship, okay? Sometimes it's leaving a bad relationship so that we can find one that is good. In either case, leaving is really hard to do. Whether it's leaving a lifestyle you've been leading, a career, a love affair, this, this is the part, this is a block. Because you're desperately holding on to what you know in fear of the unknown. Wow, that's profound. But Spirit is saying that with the lovers here, they're telling you that when you leave this, this fake sense of security that you've built up, much better things are waiting for you. Just as are the sun and the lovers. Okay? You just got to button up. You've got to finish that completion. You got to get it done. You got to complete what needs to be completed, Pisces. Okay? So you can get your son. And you need, you need to move on. From whatever you're holding on to, you need to take off. Okay? Alright, so the third block that they're talking about is the Six of Cups. And that's, to me, the card of joy. If there was a card of joy, this would be it. Whatever you're moving towards, don't move towards it in the same old habits that you did before. What you need to do is move to your new direction. Yeah. With joy in the heart of a child. You ever notice that when we're children, we do things because we want to. We love the things that we do. We go at it with the gusto and happiness and joy that all of our little beings can possibly have. As we get older, we start getting practical, and we do things that need to get done. Rightly so. We need to make money, we need to, you know, pay the bills, and we sometimes need to just do and act responsibly. And this is not what I'm talking about. But we also give up at the same time the things that bring us so much joy and happiness and keep us vibrating higher. Whether it's making a garden, um, having a vegetable garden, painting, writing. Because we simply don't have time. All those grown-up things take over our lives. And we just don't have time to do anything else. But the thing is, is that the Spirit is saying with the Ace of Cups here. If you take the time to do it, especially... This childlike joy, you're going to find a replenishing source that's going to get you what you want in life. Not what you need, what you're sending out there that you want. Because you're vibrating at a level that spirit and the source understands. One of pure joy. The fourth block that I see is the Three of Swords. A lot of us, as we get older, even when we're younger, we carry a lot of loss, a lot of pain in our heart. And as we do that, we carry a lot of, of past pain. There's a lot of hurt here. Scars, wounds, things that we don't forgive other people for when we should. But we don't. We carry around guilt and anger. This is a definite block. 
this is probably the one that we think we can get rid of easily and say, okay, forgive everybody. But it's not just about forgiving. It's about getting rid of the hurt that's been caused. Okay? That will be done slowly. With the Seven of Pentacles here. You will start making changes. You're going to assess. You're going to reassess. You're going to research where the pain comes from. How you can get rid of it. With trial and error and patience. Editing. A little bit of frustration. You can grow in a different way out of this pain. And then you'll be able to start creating. You'll be able to start bringing life to your ideas. Life as in making them manifest. Making them come to life. And it will also bring you a great sense of peace and joy, such as the Queen of Cups here, so that you'll be lifted higher. And by being this balanced emotionally, the blocks will slowly lift and things will start happening. You have to find all the things that are blocking you here. This one is the biggest one. I would tell you to look in the deepest, furthest, farthest recesses of your being and find the things, the feelings, those the bad feelings that you felt and see where they come from. Research them. Find where they originated. Forgive yourself or others and then let it go. Let it all go. And then watch miracles happen. So this has been removing your blocks. I figured it was a good read to do for Halloween. I'm going to now pick an oracle card for you. Ooh, this one is The Fates. I don't know if you see that. The Fates. I like that. I don't think I've gotten this one, so I'm going to take a look for you. I'm going to take a moment and take a look. It's 17, 1, 7 is 8. Let's see what it has to say here. 17. The Fates. I'm going to have to wear my glasses. <laughs> Let me see here. Fate, Karma. Accepting that there are things that you cannot change and knowing what those things are. This has to do with this here. The serenity prayer sums up the meaning of this card. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. The courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. There are things in life you will never have control over. The conditions brought on by the evolution of the collective, by nature, and by your past experience may be fated, preordained by spirit for a greater purpose you cannot understand in this lifetime. It may, may not be in your cards to understand why certain events occurred, but you can accept the mystery and work with what those events and your current circumstances have to teach you. This is the wisdom contained in the serenity prayer. Other people are who they are. 
you can't change them. The challenge is to accept them as they are and not to make them otherwise to suit you. This is a time to look at how you attempt to mold people to fit your view of how they should be so you can remain to the relationship and avoid discomfort. What if who they are and whatever is happening between you and them in this situation is perfect from the perspective of spirit? Now is the time to accept what you cannot change, even if it means that you honor yourself, spirit, and the other person by moving on. Moving on. Love unconditionally for each of us is on our own journey, and we cannot direct that of another. Be aware that this relationship is indeed fated, and you are meant to evolve into a better version of yourself as a result of it. That was the relationship meaning of it. So now I'm going to read the prosperity meaning of it. Your experiences concerning prosperity and abundance are beyond your personal control right now. You are being invited to accept what is unreservedly. This could be a temporary situation seemingly thrust upon you by outside forces, but there is an underlying purpose you can't see that has been determined by the fates. It could be a situation you are unprepared for or you may not understand how it will benefit you in the moment. Do not fight the situation. Write it out and see where it leads. Surrender to it and the serenity you need to make good choices from here on out will, give, will be given to you. You will indeed flourish. So, it is saying move on if you need to move on and trust in life to get you where you need to be. I would say that's just another suggestion from spirit. Don't force the situation. You're only going to block it. So, I hope that you've enjoyed this reading, Pisces. Thank you so much for being here. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate the support. And, uh, yeah, click that notification bell all so that you can know when I post again. Thanks so much for dropping by, and I will see you in the next reading, Pisces. Take care.